Dear learners, greetings from IIT Guwahati. We are in this course, Advanced Thermodynamics and Combustion, Module 4. The title of this module is Properties of Gas Mixers. Prior to this, we have covered two lectures on this mod module. First one is ideal gas and real gas. Second one is uh, mixer analysis and multi-component systems. In today's lecture, we will focus our attention only for ideal mixtures. So, uh, in this uh, lecture, we will concentrate the property evaluations for mixture containing ideal gases. To do that, we require information about the composition of the mixtures and also we also, also need to know the PVT relation, pressure, volume and temperature relations for these mixtures. So, let us start with uh, uh, the first segment uh, that is ideal gas mixtures that is under one circumstances a mixture we can treat it as an ideal gas model. First thing I just want to emphasize is that prior to this we, uh, we discussed about uh, multi component systems consisting of different phases of gases, different compositions and there are many ways this mixture can be or this uh, system can be modeled. One of the simplest model is an ideal gas mixtures. So, first thing is we need to uh, freeze that the mixture uh, has uh, gaseous components and all these components they behave as if they were in the ideal gas. So, we all know that uh, uh, for a pure component systems, uh, we already derived the um, ideal gas models or or you can say gas models and uh, by doing so we know the all we, we know all the properties for this individual components now when such components form a mixture we need to treat them on individual basis and after that we will try to consolidate their um, uh, entire informations and try to see if when try to see if the mixture uh, when after mixing uh, that means if the components after mixing they form a mixture which we are going to model as if it were to it was supposed to behave as an ideal gas. So, this is the entire summary of this lecture. Now, uh, let us see how you are uh, going to do that. Just to summarize few things that many systems of in interest involve mixtures consisting of two or more components. The mixture components or considerations are required to study psychrometrics and combustion studies. Here I need to emphasize that when you uh, uh, do this thermodynamics course on the, um, for um, undergraduate course, there we had some introductory topics like psychrometrics that means air and water vapors. So, they behave as if they were having a mixture. So, under that circumstances also you, we use the concept of mixing analysis. And apart from that, uh, in our study during the combustions, when the reactants form the products, the reactant vanishes after the reaction is over and products gets generated and uh, they form different gases or the products uh, and, and all those gases form a mixture. But such a systems, uh, if you can do in an ideal gas model, it can give a some uh, realistic uh, estimate. Then uh, the, the choice of preparing the mixture is very wide. That means, unlimited variety of mixtures can be formed from a given set of pure components and varying and varying their relative compositions. So, the principle of uh, mixtures, uh, principle of thermodynamics which are introduced so far is also applicable for systems involving mixture. The first thing that we need to know that means, when you do this uh, principle of thermodynamics, we 
need to know the two intensive properties and typically it is temperature or, pre or pre and pressure or specific volume and pressure. But apart from that for mixing analysis we require the uh, composition uh, the of the components. So, this is the first thing or first important thing that you need to highlight how you are going to decide about this composition. And these uh, details are highlighted in the subsequent slides. Now, if you uh, consider a system consisting of mixture that means, there are n number of gases if you look at this figure and this uh, gases they uh, are treated as if they are in a uh, uh, they are in a temperature T and pressure P and each gases has different compositions. So, if you say total number of mixture is n moles and they occupy a volume V, then each of this component will have a number of moles as n 1, n 2, n 3 and n i. So, we introduce the concepts like mass or number of moles of each components in the mixture. Then we need to nullify in a non-dimensional form. To do that, we need to find uh, need to know the total mass of the mixtures and when you consider this total mass of the mixture it is nothing but the sum of the individual um, uh, component masses and the mass fraction uh, can be defined which is the relative amount of components present in the mixture. Of course, the sum of these mass fractions for all the components in the mixture is unity. So, in the same line many a times in fact, in many a times an ideal approach would be instead of um, talking about mass you talk about uh, number of moles. Why? Because when you talk about mass we also need to know the molecular weight of um, each component. Many a times uh, and for uh, molecular weight plus we also need to the gas constant for each of this component, but rather if you uh, use in terms of moles the advantage that you will get is the consideration of mole fraction and number 1, number 2 instead of uh, gas constant we can get uh, this information through universal gas constant. Now, when you do this uh, analysis there are two types of analysis. Uh, when deal with the listing the mass fraction uh, of, for the components of the mixture, we call this as analysis as gravimetric analysis and the corresponding listing in terms of mole fraction is called as molar analysis. So, in our study we will deal both the things like we can think about gravimetric analysis as well as the molar analysis. Many a times molar analysis of the mixture is also called this volumetric analysis. And uh, uh, other important point is that we need to find out the molecular weight of the mixtures. So, one way to do that uh, is by considering through their respective mole fraction or mass fractions and knowing their molecular weight of each individual components one can find out the apparent or average molecular weight of the mixtures and it is defined as the ratio of total mass of the mixture to the total number of uh, moles in the mixture. So, whatever I have discussed so far this is represented in mathematical form uh, in the slides. So, uh, what it says is that we have um, a mixture containing number of gases 1, 2, 3 and j each gas will have number of moles as n 1, n 2, n 3 and n j the total mole of the uh, total mass of the total number of moles in the mixture is n and this mixture occupies a volume V and uh, uh, the mixture exists at temperature T and pressure P. So, if under these situations if you want to calculate one can calculate the total number of mass which is the summation of m i, total number of moles which is the summation of n i, 
mass fraction m a phi that is equal to m i by m and summation of course, the summation of all mass fraction is unity. Similarly, mole fraction we can define as y i that is n i by n of course, the summation of y i is also 1. Then we can find out the molecular weight of the mixtures. So, total mass of the mixture is m and number of moles is n. So, that is equal to so we, we can say what is the molecular weight of the mixtures and these numbers we can also find out by taking uh, summation of y i into m i. y i is the, uh, is the uh, mole fraction for component i, m i is the molecular weight of the component i and this we can get it through this because m is equal to m 1 to m, m some m 1 plus m 2 plus m j divided by n each m is is n 1 and m 1 plus n 2 and m 2 and so on. So, likewise we get the summation of uh, the um, y i and m i as the molecular weight of the mixture. So, this is how we calculate the apparent weight or, um, or molecular weight of the mixture. Uh, uh, for example, if you treat air is a mixture of nitrogen, oxygen, argon with this percentage, then one can find out the molecular weight by taking care of the relative weightage or compositions and we all know that this number is molecular weight of air is 28.97. So, this is how the mixture composition was analyzed. Then we will move to uh, pressure volume temperature relation for the mixtures. So, till this point of time we all know that pressure volume temperature relations for pure components. Now, these pure components form a mixture. So, uh, if you behave if you the mixture behaves as if it is where a pure component and it consists of uh, so many um, other pure components then how you are going to deal with. So, uh, uh, the first model that is proposed to for this analysis is the Dalton's model. So, what this Dalton's, Dal Dalton's model tells that uh, and this Dalton model is mainly used for used for an ideal gas model. What is the advantage of this model? Because it gives a simplified mathematical treatment which can fit appropriate for all the mixtures. Now, beginning we have assumed that uh, the mixture behaves as an ideal gas as well as the pure components. Now, when we say it is ideal gas model uh, at that point of time the first assumption that we make is that the molecules exert negligible forces on one another and the volume occupied by the molecule is negligible relative to the total volume occupied by this gas. Now, considering these two things that means, in the absence of significant intermolecular forces the behavior of each component is unaffected by the presence of other components. At the same time the volume occupied by, mol by the molecules is very small uh, as compared to the total volume. So, the molecules of this uh, gas thus can be regarded as to free to roam around the throughout the volume. So, the Dalton's model uh, uh, takes this advantage of these considerations and they proposed a concept what we call as a uh, partial pressure for the uh, component of the mixture. So, uh, Considering this Dalton's model which is, consist, which is consistent with the above, above concept, it is assumed that each component behaves as an ideal gas as if it were alone at the volume and temperature of the mixture. So, uh, he defined this partial pressure of the component P i is the pressure that its composition N i of uh, composition N i moles would exert if it were at uh, volume V and pressure P of the mixture, but the component P i is the partial pressure of the of the component in the mixture. If this component 
with certain composition n i is present in the mixture at a volume b that means we b p and b is the total volume uh, of b is the total volume of the mixture and the p is the total pressure of the mixture so uh, in that way the partial pressure for the component i is defined to some extent and uh, it uh, is a special case for additive pressure rule now when you frame the additive pressure rule in your previous slides it was main concentration was on the uh, uh, multi component systems but whereas the dalton's model is only for the ideal gas as ideal gas scenario so as a result uh, what we see is that dalton's model is a special case for additive pressure rule relating pressure specific volume and temp temperature of the gas mixture and is also a specific case for an ideal solution then ideal solution is refer as amagat model amagat model means it allows uh, addi um, additive volume rule uh, so additive volume rule gets simplified as amagat model and additive pressure rule gets simplified as dalton model for an ideal gas now uh, considering the uh, the same concepts we did it for uh, calculation of mole fraction mass fraction molecular weight we'll try to see uh, how to find out the partial pressure of the component so for uh, so uh, in a mixer this mixer uh, behaves as an ideal gas model so we can use this ideal gas equations p is equal to n r bar t divided by v total volume then this equation we can write it for the component i only change that is going to happen is the number of moles in that component rest of the numbers remain same now since so we can find a ratio pi by p is ni by n nothing but yi so thus pi is equal to yi times p and now if you take the summation of this pi it is going to we are going to get summation of pi is as p which is nothing but your additive pressure rule in same line if you uh, uh, calculate the partial volume for the component i vi we can write ni r bar t by p and if you take the ratio uh, between vi and v we'll also get the mole fraction and taking the summation of the individual volumes then we'll get the total volume so this analysis also satisfy the additive volume rule and this molar analysis we call this as a volumetric um, analysis of the mixture in terms of mole fractions now having said this we have uh, individual component in terms of partial pressures and you also find out wha what is the individual what is the volume of each individual component now knowing all these things we are now in a state that we can find out and we also know mass fraction as well as mole fractions so we can find out other properties of the mixture other properties i mean uh, internal energy enthalpy entropy specific heat and thermodynamically we can view this as a closed system as shown in this figure where there is no mass and energy interaction is taking place and from there we can find out the uh, extensive properties u h and s from this relations so uh, with same philosophy internal energy of the mixture is the sum of uh, internal energy of each component u is equal to summation of y i u i and u can be regarded as number of moles into u bar u bar is the specific molar internal energy so n u bar we can find out summation of or we can find out u bar is equal to summation of y i into u i bar in the same line we can find out enthalpy of the mixture h is equal to summation of h i and h bar small h bar is equal to summation of y i h i bar entropy of the mixture s bar is equal to summation of y i into s i bar 
specific heats that is uh, specific heat at constant volume C V bar which is nothing but D U bar by D T then we know D what is uh, U bar. So, we can find out D U bar by D T. Then specific heat at constant pressure that means, it is a molar specific heat C P bar dou H bar by dou T at constant pressure which is equal to summation of Y into I A into C P C P bar I. So, with this uh, we are in the end of uh, uh, the discussions that how you are going to get the evaluate the thermodynamic properties of the mixtures. Uh, with this line let us try to solve some numerical problems which we have understood from this lecture. So, let us understand the first problem uh, which states that the, uh, the molar analysis of gaseous products of combustion for uh, hydrocarbon fuels are listed as carbon dioxide as 0 0.07 fraction and uh, water as 0 0.1, oxygen at 0 0.08, nitrogen at 0.75 and if you add them together uh, you will land up having the total fraction totally as unity. So, this this is nothing but your molar analysis. Now, we are asked to find out the molecular weight of the mixtures and prepare a gravimetric chart. So, basically when you talk about gravimetric chart we need to do uh, we need to convert this molar analysis value to, to their respective mass fraction and see that if the total mass is unity or not. So, to start this uh, first thing what we know, we know is the uh, mixture composition in terms of molar fractions carbon dioxide, water, oxygen and nitrogen and then uh, we can find out this uh, then what we can do is like we can prepare a chart consisting of component then it is more fraction then when you multiply with respect to molecular weight we get mass fraction m i and then uh, uh, sorry number of moles when we multiply it by molecular weight we get its mass then from this we can also find out what is the mass fraction. Okay. So, we have C O 2 whatever data it is given it is given as 0 0.07 and this molecular weight of C O 2 is 44. Then we have water its value is 0 0.1 molecular weight is 18 then oxygen its uh, fraction is 0 0.08 and its uh, molecular weight is 32. Then we have nitrogen molar fraction is 0 0.75 and its uh, molecular weight is 28. Now, when you multiply them you can find out what is the mass. Mass will be 3.08 for CO2 1.8 for H2O, 2.56 for O2 and for nitrogen it is 21. Now, if you sum it off of this Ni is 1.0 and then uh, when you summation of Mi will get 28.44 then we know this tot m i uh, uh, summation of m i then m f i is nothing but m i by total mass. So, 3.08 by 28.44 0 0.108 1.8 divided by 28.44 
जीरो पॉइंट जीरो सिक्स थ्री टू पॉइंट फाइव सिक्स डिवाइडेड बाई ट्वेंटी एट पॉइंट फोर फोर विल बी जीरो पॉइंट जीरो नाइन एंड ट्वेंटी वन डिवाइडेड बाई ट्वेंटी एट पॉइंट फोर फोर जीरो पॉइंट सेवन थ्री नाइन सो इफ यू सम इट ऑफ दिस समेसन इज ऑल्सो वन पॉइंट जीरो सो यू कैन चेक योर मोलर एनालिसिस ऑल्सो गिव्स वन समेसन ऑफ एन आई इज वन एंड दिस मास फ्रैक्शन एनालिसिस ऑल्सो गिव्स एम आई इज वन सो दिस एनालिसिस इज करेक्ट एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड एज ग्राविमेट्रिक चार्ट that means we converted molar chart to gravimetric chart now if data is also given in the gravimetric form we can get back to molar chart as well now what is left with this apparent molecular weight so apparent molecular weight we can calculate so we know uh, we know each of this molecular weight and their um, number of moles so we can write it as 44 into 0.07 plus 18 into 0.1 plus 32 into 0.08 plus 28 into 0.75 so then we can find out apparent molecular weight for the mixture is 28.44 kilo joule uh, sorry kg per kilo mole so this is nothing but this data so this problem demonstrates about gravimetric chart and molar analysis or volumetric chart the next problem uh, is about evaluation of pressure exerted by the mixture under the consideration of different rules like one is through ideal gas equation other is k's rule which we studied earlier third one is van der gal equations fourth one is additive pressure rule and this additive pressure rule uh, also closely resembles with the dalton's model okay so uh, now we'll try to evaluate them one by one so what the data that is given a mixture consists of 0.8 kilo mole, mole of methane and 0.274 kilo mole of butane and it occupies a volume 0.24 meter cube and temperature 238 degree centigrade so you can recall that we have a container consisting of a mixture and it occupies the total volume and total volume and temperature as uh, 238 degree centigrade this total volume is 0.24 meter cube and temperature is 238 degree centigrade and that is nothing but 511 kelvin and this mixture contains 0.18 kilo mole methane that is ch4 and 0.274 kilo mole butane butane uh, butane is c4 h10 so based on this we can find their respective molecular weight now first thing that we need to find out what is the total number of moles n n is equal to n1 plus n2 now if you sum it off this is 0.454 kilo mole now then we can find out what is y1 y1 stands for 
methane y2 stands for butane c4 h10 so you can find out y1 is equal to n1 by n that is equal to uh, 0 0.396 and y2 is equal to n2 by n that is, is equal to uh, um, that number will be 0 0.604. So, these are the common data we get. Also, we know volume, so we can find out molar volume V bar is equal to V by n1 plus n2. Uh, v is 0 0.24 meter cube. So, it is 0 0.24 by uh, n1 plus n2 that is 0 0.454. So, this number is 0 0.53 meter cube per kilo mole and we also know uh, R bar is equal to 8314 joule per kilo mole Kelvin. Now, let us start the first model. First model is ideal gas. So, ideal gas model says that we write the equation P is equal to R bar T divided by V bar. So, we all know we, we know these parameters T, R bar, V bar and T and by inserting these values we can write this and this uh, R bar is joule. So, we have to convert them into bar. So, 8314 into 511 divided by V bar 0 0.53 since it is in joule we have to divide by 10 to the power 5. So, this will give P is equal to closely 80 bar. So, ideal gas model predicts that press a pressure exerted on the by the mixture will be 80 bar. Then K's rule. K's rule talks about the uh, calculating the value uh, with respect to critical parameter for the mixtures. So, for each mixtures we need to find for each component first thing we need to find out the critical pressure and temperature for like for methane and butane and subsequently we have to find out critical pressure and temperature for the mixture. So, let us say for CH4 we say we know that we have to use the data table and that data table is available in any of the thermodynamics books at the end of uh, towards the end. So, for methane we can say Tc1 is 191 Kelvin, Pc1 is 46.4 bar for butane C8 H10, Tc2 425 Kelvin, Pc2 is 38 bar and for each case we know Y1 is 0 0.396, Y2 0 0.604. So, then we can find out for mixture. For mixture, we can write Tc is equal to Y1 Tc1 plus Y2 Tc2 and this value will be turn about 332.3 Kelvin and similarly Pc we can write it as Y1 Pc1 plus Y2 Pc2 and this number will be 41.33 bar. So, we have P 
PC and TC. Uh, but this PC and TC will not talk about uh, uh, pressure calculations. So, you have to find the reduced parameter. So, this reduced parameter uh, means we find to find out T r. T r is nothing but T by T c. So, T, T is your 511, T c is 332.3, this number is 1.54. Then we have V r that is V bar T or P c P v by uh, R bar T c by and V bar already you know 0.53. So, V r number would be 0 0.794. So, T r and V r then will give you Z is equal to 0 0.88. How? You have to use compressibility chart. Okay. So, through compressibility chart we get Z, but knowing Z we require P. So, Z we can write it as P B by N R bar T. So, all the number we know, what we do not know is P. So, V by N is 0.53, temperature is 511, then we can write P is equal to Z into R bar T by V bar. By inserting this value, we can write P is equal to 0 0.88 into 8314 into 511 divided by 0 0.53 into 10 to the power 5, because you are converting it to bar. So, this calculation uh, will give you P is equal to 70.4 bar. So, K's rule gives P is equal to 70.4 bar. Okay. So, we have ideal gas, we have K rule. Then we have to go for the Van der Waals equation model. Now, this Van der Waals equation model, first thing we have to say that what is the Van der Waals equation of state and in fact, this Van der Waals model is one form of the real gas model. So, we can write P is equal to R bar T into B bar minus B minus A by B bar square. So, uh, B bar we already know. 0 0.53 meter cube per kilo mole. Now, what you do not know is A and B. Uh, R bar is already known, known, what you do not know is A and B. To do that, we have to find for each case. Like for CH4, we need to find from the Tata sheet what is A1, which is 2.293. B 1 0.428, we also evaluated y, y 1 small, its small fraction 0 0.396. Then we have C 8 C 4 H 10 that is butane. For this data sheet will give A 1 as 13.86. B 1 as 0 0.1162. Now, from your previous data or problem data, we already calculated what is mole fraction y 2 is equal to 0 0.604. Now, having said this, we can find out A is equal to y 1 a 1 to the power half plus y 2 
a2 to the power half. Why I said half? Because this v, uh, a is if you look at this equation uh, the empirical relation show, shows that it is it is related with v bar as a by uh, v bar square. So, as, as if we have taken the square root of a 1. So, considering this the effective number for a for the mixture we get as 8.113 and b is equal to b will be y 1 b 1 plus y 2 b 2. Then after this by putting this number and inserting the values we can get for van der Waals gas model will give the mixture values uh, the pressure exerted by the mixture as 66.9 bar. Okay. And last one is additive pressure rule. Now, the additive pressure rule says that uh, we have to treat uh, individual as each mixture component as individual component, calculate its critical values, uh, then uh, correspondingly you find its um, compressibility factor uh, sim and then you calculate the um, effective compressibility factor. Then from this effective compressibility factor you have to file the calculate the pressure. To do that what we have to do is that we have to first calculate the reduced parameter for butane and uh, methane. So, reduced parameters we can say for CH4 we can get uh, T R 1 as T 1 by T C 1. Already we have noted down uh, T C 1 value earlier. So, it is 191 by 511 this number is 2.69 and similarly we can calculate what uh, V R V R is V 1 bar P C by R bar T C. So, V 1 is 0 point that is V by N 1 into P C by R bar T C 1. Then uh, this V R number would be 2.61. So, T R 1 is 2.61 and V R will be P C 1, V R 1 is uh, 2.69 and V R 1 is 2.61. This will use compressibility chart and this gives Z 1 is equal to approximately 1. Similarly, for butane C 4 H 10, we know what is T C 2 that is 425 Kelvin, we know P C 2 that is 38 bar. Similar procedure will be followed and this will give you T R 2 is equal to 1.2. Uh, BR2 would be 0 0.95. So, these two data will give you Z2 is equal to 0 0.95. So, individual compressibility factor for uh, the components we know that is for methane it is approximately 1 that means, it is achieve a ideal gas and for butane it is 0 0.95. So, effective compressibility factor so you can say Z is equal to Y 1 Z 1 plus Y 2 Z 2 and this number we can write is 396 into 1 plus 0 0.95 
into 0 0.604. So this value would be 0 0.88. Then we can write general equation that is P B by N R bar T is equal to 0 0.88. And this equation will give you P as 70.4 bar. So if you can see that this is the same value what predicted by K rule. So, if you make a comparison of P, P is 80 bar which is predicted by ideal gas, P is equal to 70.4 bar which is predicted by K rule and pressure rule. And this P is equal to 66.9 bar by Van der Waals model. So, of course, it is a real gas model. And if you see uh, the problem defines that experimental value is 69 bar. So, what we can say is that uh, the Van der Waals gas model being a real gas approximation, it its prediction is closer to experimental values. But however, based on the simplicity, we can use we are using ideal gas model and based on our choice and advantage of the um, using different concepts, we can use the other models like K rule and pressure rules. So, this problem demonstrates that how a uh, the uh, pressure of the mixture can be calculated by variety of considerations. Okay. With this, I conclude this lecture for today. Thank you for your attention.